Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Attack Wrap here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Nick Kennedy. And before we jump into our interview today, we'll take a quick look at the OHL Players of the Week. So your OHL Player of the Week coming out of Windsor is going to go to Liam Greentree. Uh, three games played this past weekend, four goals, seven assists for 11 points, 23 on the season. Good work there from Liam Greentree. Also out of Windsor, your goalie of the week going to Joey Costanzo. Three wins, uh, 1.33 goal against average this weekend and a 9.47 or rather a 0.947 save percentage on the weekend, a 9.32 on the season for an 8-1 record. And your OHL Rookie of the Week, a new addition this year, the Rookie of the Week, going to Alessandro Diorio out of Sa uh, Sarnia, excuse me. Uh, three games played this past weekend with five assists, racking up most of his points there. Two goals before this weekend, now five helpers as well. And your Owen Sound Attack Player of the Week going to none other than number 32, Carter George. Your goalie, eight games played, 2-4-1 record, and a .8. Nine for save percentage. But enough of that. We'll uh, jump back here in studio and welcome number two, Braden Rogers, and number eight, Ben Cormier. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me today on the show. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks yeah. Uh, Braden, you know, you're back. Uh, it's your third year and you're still only 17, which is pretty yeah. wild for a couple more weeks at least. Yeah. Uh, have, have you ever faced like any challenges being a little bit younger when you start a season? Has there any ever been kind of um, obviously, coming into my uh, first year, I was 15, playing against some older 20-year-olds uh, with full-on beards and stuff. So, yeah. but uh, other than that, no, it's never really been a problem too much. But uh, uh, yeah, I always played up a year, so it kind of helped me and kind of just uh, adjust to it as I go. So, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, ben, you're coming off a, a solid campaign last year. You quadrupled your first-year point totals and. I'm wondering, like a, a, an increase like that, what does it take to uh, be able to increase your points like that? To go from, I think you were at six your first year, 24 last year. Is that just sort of like natural development or, or do you have to put in some pretty intentional work to get there? Yeah, you obviously try to put in some work. Like I try to work on my shot every day, try, try to score more goals, but also get a better opportunity last year, played more minutes and mm -hmm. just capitalize on the chances you get. You're playing between a, a couple of guys there, I think last game, the, just some pretty wild hands there with Harry Nancy and yeah. even Pierce, uh, you know, making a pretty good uh, case for himself here in his first year. What is it about kind of the, like you all have very unique styles and, and yet you all find yourself on one line there. What has it been like playing between those guys? It's it's different. Like I've never I've never played with a guy that young like in Pierce. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe what he did the other game. When he went between his legs, I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> and Harry, Harry always seems to have a puck on a string. He can make any play. Oh, man. Any play he wants. He's, yeah. He's great. Anytime you see him with it, it's, it's like it, it's just glued to his yeah. tape somehow. Yeah. It's Excellent. crazy. Very cool. Uh, Braden, you know, talking about some offense here, I mean, being a defenseman, you have an absolute rifle of a shot. I don't know if people tell you that enough or not. I remember your first OHL goal last year. I was kind of yeah. sitting just in line with it when you uh, when you shot at their top shelf. Is that something that you've worked on like just religiously or has it just kind of come naturally? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, I've definitely worked on it quite a bit. Uh, when I was growing up, um, you know, my dad, I gotta give props to him. He uh, made me a little synthetic ice rink out in our garage, so. I was out there pretty much every day shooting at least 100 pucks and mm -hmm. yeah it was just some way to get out of chores some some house saying I'm all <laughs> going out to shoot pucks so and yeah it's just something I really like to do um, coming not coming from the city so didn't really have anybody to play with so mm -hmm. that's how I uh, spent my time alone. So how would you then uh, encourage any of the junior attacks out there that uh, that watch that rifle and just go like I want to I want to be able to shoot laser beams the way Braden does. <laughs> yeah I mean I think uh, it's obviously a pretty big part of the game. You know, you gotta, especially as a defense on the blue line, you gotta get her, get her through. And uh, it's not just how hard it is; it's it's more so how accurate it is. Especially mm -hmm. right now uh, in the OHL, a lot of people are um, stacking up, and um, yeah, it's just pretty hard to get it through. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. yeah, just it's a big part of the game. And if you work on it, it'll it'll help you out eventually in the long run. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. 
Uh, ben, you know, often uh, there, pretty much every number we like seeing going up year after year, uh, except for one that we like to see go down, and yours went down, which is penalty minutes. You had, uh, <laughs> you had like 23, 24 in your first year, and then somehow only six penalty minutes for all of last season, and I think you played every single game last year. Yeah. How do you how do you stay out of the box? Is that like is that a part of your game, or is it just like last year you just kind of felt like you know there you're just vibing? I don't know. Like I still want to play hard, but I just last year I got lucky. Just no penalties. Yeah. I got my first penalty in the last game of the season last year. Right, yeah. right. Wild. Okay. Well, there you go. That's uh, that's good to know. I mean, is that uh, have you found like does it help when you're out of the box that much? Or like when you're in the box, is there a certain number of penalties that you're like, okay, that means I, I played to this level? Or is it just like the refs were looking the other way and you, and you just kind of got away with things? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a super dirty player either. So whatever calls I get, usually I deserve. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, good to know. Uh, Braden, for you, uh, last year was uh, a bit of a, a personal best for point totals uh, yeah. up to to 10 points for a, a defensive defenseman, which is mm -hmm. great this year, you know, not 10 points, but 10 games played and already seven points. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? Like, is this, uh, is uh, this a new kind of style that you're playing? Is it something that you focused on over the summer or uh, you're just kind of surrounded by some unreal talent right now? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a good whole team effort, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. uh, these coaches are great at putting everybody in different situations and, it's uh, my first time in the league uh, playing on the power play, so that's just giving me a little bit of more confidence for my offensive side of the game. And, uh, yeah, I think um, just all, all the players around me just it's help, helps out to just, I guess, give one guy the puck, and mm -hmm. sometimes it turns into a point. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been really nice. And, uh, yeah, just more so the coaches haven't trusted me. And, uh, yeah, I just can't, can't complain so far. So. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look natural out there. Like, yeah, it, it, thank you. You know, it looks like you're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a lot of fun. That's good. I'm curious for both of you, kind of looking at, you know, how numbers change throughout the year and you guys get bigger and you get faster and you get stronger. How do you go into each season um, in terms of, like, setting personal goals? Are, are those things that you try to do? Do you set, like, a, you know, I want to uh, I want to see this improvement in my game? Or is that something you generally leave to the coaches to tell you, Hey, I want you to work on this or work on that. Like for me, for me, one of my big things last year was to work on my skating. Mm. So they coaches would tell you that at the end of the year, and then all summer I just worked on my skating, and mm. it got better this year. So I'm glad. Great. Um, yeah, like I think uh, same thing. Like just not nothing. Uh, like uh, like one thing you want to work on. It's just get a get better as an overall and mm -hmm. especially as a defenseman, just worry about the defensive side of the play before you get into the offensive side. And yeah. uh, one thing I like to look at is uh, plus minus. I know it's it's pretty hard, but yeah, especially yeah. as a defenseman, it's it's uh, something I really look look at. And uh, yeah, it just shows uh, if you're really reliable in the D zone or not. Sure. So, yeah. I, I guess that would kind of impact a defenseman, yeah. maybe their, their mentality a little yeah. bit more. Mm -hmm, for That's sure. fair. Uh, ben, how, how do you kind of judge success then when it comes to working on your skating? I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, it's really you never want to stop working on. I think any player, even at the highest level, is going to say, oh, I want to work on my skating this summer. But how do you how do you judge improvements or how do you judge success in yeah. uh, that area of your game? Yeah, well, I was judging success this summer by like just how hard like the drills I was doing with the mm -hmm. skating like at the start I could barely do them and by the end of the summer I'm I'm a pro at them, so you try to you try to have that balance yeah find the good the good stuff out of it but yeah so there's really like a value and maybe for the kids watching at home at like pushing yourself to the point that it's uncomfortable and and then yeah trying to get yeah, to a level sure. where maybe like, you... everybody's got some stuff to improve on no matter what the level you play excellent that's awesome all right well hey we're uh, we're gonna jump into some fun stuff you guys know I like doing some fun stuff so yeah. uh, behind you there you've got a couple of uh, whiteboards all right. and I think Ben yours is on the other side yeah. there so what I'm gonna have you do is uh, I've got ten things that you're gonna need to rank so you may want to go like portrait style here on your uh, on your whiteboard and uh, write down one to ten. And uh, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you blind rank these things. So I'm going to 
I'll say them in order and you kind of put them wherever you feel like they fit the best. And uh, for those of you watching at home, feel free to do the same thing. We're going to be, uh, as the kids like to say, blind ranking some hockey sty. So mm. these are going to be different things that players do to uh, maybe express their own style. And you guys are going to have to rank them, one being the best, ten being just the worst. Okay. And uh, obviously, you won't be able to switch spots once, uh, once they're there. So let's go uh, right off the bat here, starting strong with bubble visors. Bubble used to bias. be a used to be a classic back in the like day. A couple yeah, here in studio also. as well, up behind us. Mm. Bubble visors. Where do they go on the hockey sty list? I'm putting at eight for sure. At eight. Okay, yeah, so pretty low. Eh? Never really been a fan of them. That's fair. You weren't a weren't a big fan of like old Ovechkin kind of. Mm. Yeah, that's all right. But yeah, that's fair. That's today's fair. today's style isn't isn't the greatest. Yeah, I don't think. fair enough. Yeah, fair I'm enough. putting it at ten. Putting it at ten. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You kind of you you. Looked like you started it down there a few times and rethought it. All right, next one then, and uh, I think you guys have seen this in Erie before, is chrome buckets, chrome helmets. Mm. Where do those fit, and would you wear one? I, I would definitely wear one. Yeah. I know yeah, Barry too. switched to it too. Okay. Yeah. I'm putting it at four. Number four, chrome buckets. Okay, so it's, it's up there. Yeah, I'm putting it at six. Putting it at six. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, your next one then, and uh, this is one that I'm sure uh, I'm sure you've seen on the NHL feed before, but golden blades in the skates. Mm. And this is all about like style. This is all about style. All right. I'm putting that ten. Okay. Oh wow, it's going yeah. way down there. I just don't. Think yeah, anybody... I would too, but I already have bubbles at ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think really anybody nine. notices unless they're really. Yeah, it's true. That's fair. I mean, you guys are mostly black blades these yeah, days, black, right? Yeah, black right now. Okay, excellent. Uh, all right, this is a this is a pretty classic, but half tucking the jersey. You could you could say half or even back tuck, if you just kind of want the the tailbone protectors sticking out. I'll put that seven. Number seven. Okay. I'm putting it at four because some guys some guys can rock it well. Some guys yeah. do rock it. Yeah. All right, not bad. Well, in a in the same vein here, we're going, and this this really shouldn't make a comeback, but full tuck. Okay, that's gotta go nine. <laughs> <laughs> that's going down low. Okay, <laughs> we're filling up the bottom pretty easily here. This yeah. is uh, that's fair. Now, not something that you guys have to deal with uh, in the OHL, but perhaps some of the uh, some of the men's league, women's league players watching right now is uh, cage hang. Oh, that's got to be two. Got to be two. That's like the big thing. I, yeah. With okay. uh, the, the kids now. See, the that's. Hang. I'll put it at three. Okay. Uh, yeah, three. Just something that I. It must have come after my, uh, after my era, because I do not understand. Uh, yeah, I don't get it either. But <laughs> all the little kids like it, so. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, one of my personal favorites here. So be careful where you put this. Is uh, white gloves. White gloves, eh? White gloves. I'll put that at five. Okay, all right, fair enough. Seven for me. Seven, okay. Would you guys rock white gloves with your white jerseys, or is it still, you gotta go black? Uh, it's gotta be black. Yeah, I think it should be black. For gotta sure. be, okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, here's, a, here's a good one here, is uh, tongue flop on the skates. Just oh. letting the tongues right out. It depends on how you rock it, I think. Yeah. Like, Willy, Willy Nylander yeah. looks pretty good. That's, that's fair. Shout out Jackson Stewart. Yeah, yeah, Stewie, yeah Stewie, Stewie did Stewie, rock. So he yeah. called them the sniper tongues. The so. sniper tongues. <laughs> I'm going to six. Six, okay. Right, well, we'll make sure he doesn't see I that. Got five. Number five, all right, yeah. all right. Well, it looks like you guys got a couple of big ones here coming up. We're going to go, uh, go with this one here. Tinted visor. That's just, <laughs> that's a one. <laughs> that's, is that an easy one? Got, that's fair, okay. I got two. You got two, okay. Hopefully all right. you got a good one for the last one. I do, I do. I think I do at least. All right, whether you're a fan of uh, Thomas Placanic or maybe Ron Stoppable from Kim Possible, we've got Turtleneck Under the Jersey. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's a good one. <laughs> Whatever you got at number one, one of these days, hey, you I do still have to rock for a game. So. That's great. All right, go ahead and uh, you can show everybody here your uh, your rankings. So, oh, oh, there you go. Almost got oh. it. This one over here with the light on. There you go. <laughs> so we got turtleneck at number one, tinted visor number two, cage hang at three, uh, back tuck four. What's that? Tongues out, chrome bucket, white gloves. Yep. Yeah. Full tuck, golden blade. So bubble uh, bubble visor and uh, golden blades, kind of rocking the bottom of the list here. Yeah. Looks like a cage hang and a turtleneck is going <laughs> to take us up there to, to number one. Excellent. That's awesome. Um, well, we're going to play uh, we'll play another game here. And, uh, On this? Yeah, you're welcome to yeah. just kind of wipe those off. And we're going to have you guys uh, either write down the word me or each other's name. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'll ask you guys a few uh, a few questions here, and then you guys got to answer who is more likely to. All right. As uh, as the fans get to know you guys a little bit more, we'll go in a reverse order here of the questions this week. But uh, who is more likely to have an interview go viral? Between me and him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's a pretty clear uh, call out, you're welcome to. Uh, Call somebody else out on your team. All right, what are we going with here? I'm going. I close. got Raji. Okay, each other. All right, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Well, we'll see what happens then. Uh, all right, your next one here is uh, who is more likely to have practiced their interview questions in a mirror? <laughs> and okay. All right. It's all about uh, all about Braden practicing <laughs> the uh, the interview questions. We'll go with uh, who is more likely when celebrating a championship to drop the trophy on the ice. <laughs> okay. That's a quick one there. Wow. Okay, that was yeah. an easy one to come up with. Eh? There sounds like there might be a history there. Um, who is more likely to get their own segment? during the first intermission of Hockey Night in Canada, or maybe now the new prime uh, whatever they're doing. It's mm. a hard mm. one. I don't know. OK, all right. So I think you guys are in agreement here. What, uh, what's the name of it? You're going, you got your segment. They call you up. You got uh, 10 seconds to send them an email back with what you're calling it. Mm, I don't know, maybe the. The Raji Show. The Raji Show. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's not too bad. Uh, in a pinch, you got to pick one of you two who is uh, biting the bullet and jumping in the cubby suit for a game. Just a quick replacement up in the stands. We need somebody gone down last minute. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> Corn's pretty jolly, so. Okay. All right. <laughs> I feel like he could rock that. You, is there like a good go to? Oh, I for uh, sure could. <laughs> good go to move or something like that? No, it's all freestyle on the spot. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Um, who is, uh, who's more likely to, we'll just say, be involved in a line brawl? Mm. I don't even know. That's a hard one. I feel like you guys are both yeah. very uh, clean players as far as it goes. <laughs> Probably none of us. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a scratch. All right, yeah. all right, fair enough. Fair We're enough. usually just picking the guy not fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Let Hooks and Smitty do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who, uh, who's more likely to forget something important on a road trip? <laughs> nice. Is there uh, anything specific you've forgotten before? Um, I'm trying to think. Just a bunch of stuff. Passport? Hopefully, hopefully not my passport tomorrow. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Um, all right, uh, let's see here. Who's more likely to win a game of Super Bowl? Who's got the feet? Okay, wow, that's a that's Forms. an emphatic me right there. Yeah, here. I'm yeah. probably on the worst on the team. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. All right, well, you, you know what? Given. That's all right. Uh, who is? I mean, we're getting closer and closer. Who is most likely? to uh, get those Christmas tunes bumping in the locker room. Okay, big Christmas guy here. Oh yeah, I love it. Okay. And uh, 
me and Smitty, I live with Smitty, so we were talking about it. We're going to be pretty festive this year. Nice. So, all right. All right. Yep. Fair enough. Like, do a little, maybe a oh, little Christmas oh, decal Smitty's, on Smitty's the Smitty's a little over the, the edge, but... Uh, really? He, uh, like, he starts listening to... Uh, Christmas music like right now so no, it's not even been yeah, Halloween I know it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> okay I mean hey you know what if he uh, if he enjoys it then uh, <laughs> fair enough who uh, who is going to be more likely to give the stick a little flex after the puck goes wide <laughs> <laughs> oh each other all right, all right. fair enough uh, you just don't want to put yourself for that uh, one <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess down a similar vein here, who is going to be more likely to uh, call up to stumps during practice for a new pair of blades? It's me every game. Yeah. Just really hard on the edges or what? I don't know. It seems to be something wrong with my blades every game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is more likely to sneak in an extra cheat meal? Maybe on the on the road, you know, coaches aren't around and just grab a little McDonald's or something like that on the way. Okay, all right. Yeah, I have trouble gaining weight, so I'm fine with you. Hey, you know what? There you go. That's uh, <laughs> not a problem that I have. Uh, who is most likely to be last to leave the ice? Definitely not me. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, I'm pretty, usually mid-pack. Okay, okay. I'll say me. Sounds good. Last to leave over the corms. ice. Over corms. Yeah, over here. All right, who's most likely then to be last to leave the rink just entirely, like the building? Probably me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping my hands for that. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, last one here for you is uh, same thing. Who is most likely to be first to arrive? First to arrive. Uh, I think that's me again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's like in the light. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, hey, I got a couple. Uh, you don't need the whiteboards anymore, but. Uh, Go through a couple of a uh, couple of fun questions here. So, um, for you guys, I mean, you've, you've been on this team for I guess this is both of your third seasons here. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, have played with a lot of uh, guys that aren't here anymore. Uh, doesn't have to be one of those, but if you could play with one former attack player, who would it be? Um, I heard that uh, Sean Dursey was a player. Obviously, he is, but. Mm -hmm. He's pretty stellar here, so uh, I live at the same billet house as he did, so I hear lots from him, or oh, okay. uh, of him from them, so I'd say him. Yeah, yeah. I'll go uh, Peter Campbell, a little older guy. He was oh, my coach, okay. so... Thought <laughs> played he here, cool. too, yeah, right? he played here. All right, there you go. That's pretty exciting. Um, what is your... Uh, obviously, you guys were using nicknames there. What's your favorite nickname you've ever been given for uh, in hockey? Uh... Mine's pretty plain. It's just Raji or Raj. Okay, okay. I'm trying to think. Just Corms, but there's definitely yep. some stuff I've been <laughs> called before. Fair enough. That I can't remember of right now. Do you have, uh, I guess, down a, down a similar vein here as well, but do you have a, a favorite chirp that you've ever been, uh, ever received? Mm. Uh, no, I. That's I can't TV even appropriate, anyone, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Usually they're not, so. Yeah, yeah. The guys just call me a Frenchie. That's it. Me okay. And, okay. Me and Bruce. Do a lot of people know that, that uh, like, in town that you're French? Because I didn't even know that, and you were on the show twice last year. Yeah. Uh, no. I, I just found this out, like, a few weeks ago. Yeah, but me, me, Bruce, Harry, and uh, DeLille were all French. We, okay. Me and Bruce speak the most in the room, and nobody can understand us. So See, I've fun. had Bruce on the show. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Wow, okay. All right. Uh, what, or who rather, is your favorite NHLer to watch right now? Mm, even though I'm a DI, I like watching Leafs and I like yeah. watching Matthews and Helander and Marner. Yeah. Them. yeah. I'm a Sens fan, so I'm going to okay. pick. I'm going to, I like watching Tim Stutzla and Josh Norris. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. You like the little uh, poster people brought for uh, Stutzla a couple weeks yeah. ago? Yeah. That was pretty <laughs> funny. Uh, don't worry. Don't, don't say anything on TV. You don't want to. <laughs> Maybe they're watching. They're probably not watching here. Um, if you were to find this is a, this one really could be personal. If you find clear tape on your blades, who is most likely to have done that? Probably Landon Hookie or Sam okay. McHugh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Elliot Arnett. 
Elliot Arnett. <laughs> wow, the rookie is getting involved in it, eh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good to know. It was a battle at the start of the year. Okay, so. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, if any, do you do you have any superstitions for uh, for the game? Like, are you very superstitious players? Um, I could probably write a Bible on my superstitions. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's like down to the minute down to like everything I do. It's like standing in the same spots and yeah. I don't know how many squirts of Gatorade I have. It's, sure. it's, it's actually crazy, but I don't know, I like doing it and I feel, hey. feel like I'm not gonna play my best if I don't do it, so. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I'm not a big superstitious guy, but I like to show up at the rink for game days. The same time I sit in my car, listen to some music, put me in a good mood before I walk in. And Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. What's your, what's your go-to uh, good mood song? Depends on the day. Okay. Literally depends on the day. It'll change. Yeah, yeah. The day. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. No problem. Uh, do you have a what's what's your weirdest uh, stition? I don't know if that's what they're called. My weirdest superstition. Yeah. Um, there's there's some pretty weird ones, but when I'm tape or waxing my stick, I have to wax it six times on the top, six times on the bottom, and okay. then go back to the top three times. Oh, okay. And if I mess up, I have to do it all again. And is that one of those things where like you did it, you scored, and now you just keep doing it? Or uh, you did I think it I might have had a good game, and then yeah. I just stuck with it. Hey, fair enough, yeah. fair enough. If it works, keep going. Uh -huh. uh, all right, this may, uh, may be more for you, Ben, but you never know. You're one on O, just you and the goalie. What's the move? What do you do? Are you shooting? Are you dangling? Are you going low blocker? Are you trying to forehand, backhand? If I'm shooting, I'm going Backhand, forehand, low blocker. Okay. If I'm DKing, I'm probably going five hole. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And are you are you dragging it across just to open it up, or are you? How yeah, are you doing that? I'll do I'll do a little fake to the backhand, go back to the forehand, nice. put a five hole. Love it. Uh, I hope I never get a breakaway, but <laughs> um, I think if I'm shooting, it'll be high top corner mm -hmm. and. I'd never do it in a game, but I like going in between the legs, so. Yeah, hey, might as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Rock it in practice, you never know. Um, okay, we got, uh, we got 60 seconds here, so uh, we'll quickly do this. Uh, what, what are you listening to pre-game? Like, you're in the locker room, maybe you get the headphones on, maybe you get a chance to recommend a song. What are you, um, what are you going with? I like, like, before the games, I usually like just simple country and okay. maybe some Creed. Oh, wow, yeah, okay, what like a callback. That. There you go. Yeah. A little take me um, higher right before yeah. you get out there? Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. I'm putting on some Travis Scott. <laughs> Travis Scott, <laughs> yeah, that's good okay. Too. Yeah, I do that. All right, big rap guy. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back after this commercial break, and when we do, we'll have a few more questions. Uh, and no trivia question this week, as there are no home games, and, uh, but we do have some highlights, and we'll go over those as well. So make sure you stay tuned here on Rogers TV for all your Owen Sound Attack action. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. I am a wild robot. Be the first to watch the wild robot movie at... Home? Home. 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 Amazing. Amazing. From the studio that brought you How to Train Your Dragon. He needs to swim and fly. <laughs> Swimming's easy. I can teach him the way my mom taught me. Swim! That's drowning. The Wild Robot. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we encourage Canadians to pause and remember all that veterans have sacrificed for us. Lest we forget.
You're watching an interesting local show on Rogers TV and you want to know more. That's when you head to rogerstv.com. Our website provides more information about our programs, our hosts, our schedule, and about how you too can get involved with Rogers TV. Visit us online at rogerstv.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Attack Wrap here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Nick Kennedy, and uh, I, I, I unfortunately, I lied there before the break. I uh, just found out that I did. We do have a trivia question for you. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pop that one up on the screen now, and it is against what team did Braden Rogers score his first OHL goal against? If you get the answer right, you will get two tickets to November 2nd's game against the Saginaw Spirit here at the Bay Shore. So make sure you get those phones out and get on Google or find your way to uh, Hockey DB or Elite Prospects, figure out uh, who that goal came against and make sure you text in your answer here to Rogers TV. We'll head back into a couple of fun, uh, fun questions here and then we'll jump into some highlights as well. Uh, you know, big thing these days is media and of course hockey movies are uh, just one of those things you got to have yeah. around do you have a favorite or a go-to hockey movie um i think it's probably a tie between slapshot and miracle okay miracle okay ice, yeah. yeah me it's miracle on ice probably miracle on ice it's iconic yeah <laughs> you guys have the speech memorized or something you like uh, to listen to no I, I i couldn't <laughs> yeah can tell you fair enough fair enough um I'm curious, I mean, I know uh, we talked a little bit about flexing sticks and, and when a puck goes wide, but um, it seems like there's a lot of new curves coming out. I saw even the Gabriel Smith's curve there. He's got a pretty hooked toe on yeah. it. Do you guys have a specific curve that you like using the most? Uh, I've been with P92 for mm -hmm. oh, at least probably five years now. Okay. Yeah, I've, been, I've, I've had the same curve since I was tiny too. Yeah, yeah. I use a P29. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I think uh, I think I just saw that one recently. I never used that, and then I saw it recently. Yeah. It's quite something. Uh, what uh, what flex do you guys use? Uh, I use a 80, but I cut it a couple inches, so it's probably around okay. 80, 83, yeah, 84. Yeah. I've been all over the place. My first year I used 85. Second year I moved down to 80. Now I'm back down to 75. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just because I find. There's more pop on my shot. Sure, sure. Yeah. Does it help? I mean, obviously, being a centerman, I feel like you kind of have to shoot in those tight areas. Yeah. So a lower flex probably helps yeah. for things like that. Yeah. Excellent. Um, we'll go with uh, we'll go with favorite book of all time. <laughs> I know I know hockey players. You know, you don't get as much time for reading because you're you know you got a lot of work to be doing. But when you get a chance to kind of sit down and and read a book, what are you going for? Um. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I haven't read a book in a while. <laughs> <but> <laughs> okay, fair, but, enough. Uh, fair enough. When I was younger, I liked Geronimo Stilton. I don't know if you guys oh, know okay. that, but Very. that or uh, I survived. Okay. Yeah, there's just come with kids books. Nice. I like uh, I like real life stories, not not oh, okay. fictional. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Something like that, but sure. I don't know the last book. Get on like read. a <laughs> like a hockey biography or something. Yeah. Like that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Uh, are you guys more uh, white tape, black tape? Does it make a difference? I'm well, always Mr. Black. Superstition over here probably. Uh, I'm black, but I put a uh, black puck mark, or sorry, I'm white, but I put black yeah, puck yeah. marks on it. So. Is that before or after the wax? Uh, before. Before the wax, yeah. okay, and then the wax kind of holds it on there? Yeah, I think so. so. Gotcha. I was a white tape guy until about two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't score for like three games and I switched it. Declan told me to go black tape. I went black tape, and I scored the next game. So there you it's go. Been, it's been like that since. There you go. Do you have one of each still, or are you just no? All they're black? all black now. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Uh, what is okay? This might be a little bit of a call out. You guys are going on a road trip. Got to know what is your least favorite city to go play in. Mm, least favorite city, probably Flint. Flint. Okay. Yeah. A little sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm gonna go that we stay in. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Flint. Flint is yeah, Flint sucks. I don't even think we're staying. A couple there experiences at the oh, okay. hotels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fair. That is fair. What? Uh, how about your favorite? What's your favorite one to to go stay in? Um, I love our. I don't know if it's e our Eastern road trip. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Kingston and yep. Peterborough. It's nice. my hometown okay. game. So. Oh great. Yeah. All right. And I'm gonna go with Ottawa. Yeah. yeah. Big Just Ottawa guy. Funnest road trip of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is so much fun. to do. We get a day off. Sure. Day off guys enjoy it. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna 
I don't know. Do you guys get some time off during the World Juniors in Ottawa this year? Are you going to try to sneak oh, to true. a game? No. Yeah, we do have time off, but I'll probably be able to catch yeah, an yeah, exhibition yeah. game or two. Sure, sure. Get Brownie to hook you up or yeah. something like that. Yeah, okay. Good. Uh, who, uh, this, is a, this is a fun one, but who's your biggest fan? My biggest fan? Probably, obviously, family a lot. Uh, my little cousin, he's pretty big into hockey and... You know, I, I know he looks up to me, so I'd say him for sure. Nice. Yeah, me, I'd say my biggest fan is my grandpa. Yeah, just loved hockey and so excited to watch me play. Very yeah. cool, very cool. Do you guys have like a, um, I don't know, a piece of advice or something that a family member or a mentor gave you that you try to hold on to now for your hockey career? Uh, not Nothing much like that I can think of, just... Maybe just shoot 100 pucks today? <laughs> yeah, no, just... I don't know, probably hard work. Yeah. It's just, you got nowhere without that, so. Yeah, yeah. It's one thing you gotta have. For me, it's pretty much just trust the process. Like, sure. hockey's a process. Yeah. Like, 15 years. We're not even pro yet, and yeah. we've been playing for 13, 14 years. Yeah, yeah. You just have to trust the process every day. Well, that's, that's a good outlook. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you know, for as far as you've come, there's just, there's so much more, it sounds yeah. like, that you want to achieve as well, and mm -hmm. very cool. Um, what is, uh, what is one thing about you that maybe the fans at home or coaches or people getting to know you wouldn't expect about you? Um, I, like, uh, I like having a hobby farm. Okay. I used to have chickens and guinea hens and wow. yeah, bunnies, but All right. you know, they weren't, uh, the coyotes weren't too nice to them, so. Yeah, yeah, fair Yeah, enough. they're done now, so. All right, wow. But that's one thing I used to do a lot. Yeah, yeah, myself as well. So yeah. I'll have to yeah. send you home with some seeds one day. <laughs> I'm going to say it so the people can know now that I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprise, everybody. Yeah. Uh, very cool, very cool. Uh, all right, I, I'm curious. I know I know these can be, you know, some people like them, some people don't. But, uh, you know, we've been seeing a lot of people go with mustard packs on the bench all of a sudden. Are you a smelling salt or mustard sea or mustard... Uh, on the bench or maybe like pickle juice like what what are you kind of using there if you have to use some uh i've never used any of that stuff okay but smelling salts are banned i think from the league now oh are they okay and uh i know some guys do the pickle juice on our team yeah yeah pickle shots yeah, yeah. i don't think i'd try the mustard one but smitty gave me a sip of his pickle juice the other day and it was pretty good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not too bad a little bit of dill in there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's good that's good uh, I'm curious for you guys, I mean, you played a little bit of, uh, I think you guys, I don't remember actually if there was an OT in last year's playoff, but playoff OT, five on five, regular season three on three, do you have a preference? Um, I mean, obviously more at stake for playoffs, but I'd, I'd rather playoffs. Three on threes, it's really easy to get uh, burnt, kind of yeah, like yeah, losing yeah. your man and stuff, so yeah. I'd say playoffs. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd prefer the playoffs too, just sure. for the atmosphere. Yeah. Five on five, it's like any regular shift. Mm -hmm. Right, so. right. Excellent. Okay, good to know. Um, are, did you collect hockey cards as a kid? Did you have like a you know, kind of a star card that you like to hold on to? Yeah, I have lots. I know uh, one year my grandpa found like boxes of old hockey cards at a yard sale. So I have, I have tons and some of them might be worth money. I just never know. So Nice. Yeah, I have, I have tons too, like boxes in my room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try to go through them like once every like two, three years sure. just, to, just to remember. Do you collect your own ever? Uh, yeah, I have, we, they give us a big stack of them every oh, year. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. yeah. You get to give those out to yeah. me and Lee and friends and mm -hmm. stuff. That's good. All right, well, hey, that's, uh, I think that'll lead us now into our highlight package. So why don't we go ahead and run the first game and... Uh, We'll come back afterwards, we'll chat about those and, and uh, hear what you guys have to say about those games as well. So let's go ahead and roll those. Took a bit of a bump there, Colts recover in their own zone. It's Tristan Bertucci, back to Tiller. Through the neutral zone, Grayson Tiller takes the shot, scores! What a shot from Grayson Tiller, picks off the corner. And the Barry Colts, they have a one nothing lead. Tiller's first goal of the season, he looked like a natural there as he Put that one. McDonald back to the blue line. Crawford sending it back to Petrovsky. 
Finds McDonald in front, deflected, scores! Landon Hooky on the doorstep. And the attack. Early if, on, and actually get it down low, and nice little... Keeps it in, up to Hooky, across, backhand, and somehow that doesn't go in. Like Nancy trying to carry that one in. Gary Nancy still with it. Back to Smith, takes the shot, scores! Looked like it was deflected in front. May have been Sam the Q. And the attack. What a whole sound here tonight. Watch Connor Smith, that long shot. Takes the pass from Nancy, and again, just, yeah, it's me. Puck picked up here by Lowe, in front to Weigel. Backhand, what a save by George. Rebound, scores! Carter Lowe able to put it past Carter George. Watch Lowe just going to get this puck up to Weigel. He kind of runs out of real estate, but what a heads-up play there to kind of flip it over George. And watch Weigel just hit the brakes, turn around, flip. Here tonight, as the Colts will chip that one into the zone, Crawford back to pick it up, takes the hit from Bodwin. In front, scores! Riley Patterson! A quick strike here from the Barry Colts. Holds one in here in this third, but excuse me, that's Bodwin. Great job to body his man off the puck there. That's great work. And then watch, just a little slide pass. Mark trying to deliver the hit. Misses at the point. Petrovsky takes the shot. Deflected. Hribbick had that one sneak through him. Looked like maybe Terracini got a stick on it. But either way, that was a dribbler. And a couple of fortunate bounces. But I mean, that's well, a great example. Yeah. Up to Nancy. Nancy with a breakaway. Forehand, backhand, stopped by Herevic. Great save there from the Colts goaltender. And now Barry will look to go the other way. Patterson ahead, finds Bodwin. Bodwin, backhand, stopped by George. Hemming, he's going to go to the net. Forehand, backhand, scores! <laughs> nice backhand there from Hemming. Quiet assassin here, wait. Fake to the, the forehand. Sound and attack. Taking his time, stopped by Herevic. When for the Barry Colts. He's gonna drive to the net, slows down, shot, scores! Cole Bodwin going all Needs to score here for the Owen Sound attack as he carries this one in. Backhand, forehand, and lost the handle. And that'll do it as the Barry Colts win in a shootout. 4-3 over the Owen Sound attack. Two stops, I think three breakaway opportunities and very 48 shots, but they, you know, again, this is the aim there for the Owen Sound attack, obviously going all the way to a shootout there against Barry and Barry obviously, you know, a strong team as well. So yeah. um, what were a couple of things you guys liked about that game? A couple of things that, you know, maybe you'd want to improve for the next game? Uh, yeah, I think... Obviously, we knew coming into the game that, you know, we're the younger team and mm -hmm. kind of the underdogs, but, you know, um, we're, we're always really prepared um, from practice in the week before, and, yeah, we just uh, never gave up, and, you know, we shut down their big guys, and our uh, bigger guys did what they do at best, and, yeah, you know, it sucks we didn't come out with it, but, sure. yeah, it's good yeah. to get the one point. Good experience for our younger guys. Like yeah. Barry's the top-ranked team mm -hmm. in the OHL, so... I think it shows a bit, like the league, like who we really are. We can compete with any team on any night. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, they, you know, the week that London gets thrown to the top of the power rankings, you guys take no overtime. The yeah. week that Barry retakes the number one spot, you push him to a shootout. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they don't even give Owen Sound the nod on the board there. Oh, so, yeah, I don't know what. Uh, they don't like us. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, no, I mean, it, it looked like really a, a solid game all around. You talked yeah. about the big guys doing what they need to do, the young guys putting in the work, getting that experience. How important is that being? I mean, obviously, you know, you kind of mentioned we're a young team and, and you guys are often the underdog just because of that simple fact. It's just mm -hmm. kind of how the you talked about the process of hockey. It's sort of the cycle of how a team goes. Um, for you guys, like, how important have you seen some of these games be for a lot of these young guys? You know? Yeah, sure. Well, it's it's huge for them. Like, I know my first 10 games in the OHL, like, we weren't playing as much as the younger guys are, so I think mm -hmm. it's great for them getting the experience and yeah, yeah. getting all the touches in. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah, like Corm said, um, they're, they're getting a lot of experience, especially in their first year, and I think it's just nice to have them 
play at their best because it pushes yeah. the other lines to do better. You know, it's you know no one wants their spot taken. So, yeah. but at the same time, you need to lean on other lines to say the first and second's not doing that great, and mm -hmm. and your uh, third and fourth is buzzing. It would, it's gonna help you out a lot. So, excellent. Yeah. Well, and I think too uh, maybe a little nod to this brand new coaching staff as well. I mean, yeah, you guys have had sure. a number of different different iterations now of coaching staffs and and to have one that you know in their very first year aren't afraid to play young guys as much as they're playing them you know you can yeah you can definitely understand there'd be that that pressure to almost want to run the top line as much as you can see as much success as you can for your first year as a coach but to be able to give the nod to those younger guys and and really like you guys have responded in kind as well and it seems like the mm -hmm. team is yeah. is meshing well together yeah for sure the the coaches uh i mean they're top notch and you know it's it's a different culture this year and mm -hmm. everybody's just really um enjoying being at the rink this year and um yeah like uh it, it's just for younger guys coming in you know other stories from vets and stuff but it's none of that this year mm -hmm. or it, it hasn't been the past couple of years i'm just saying yeah, yeah yeah but uh yeah it's uh we're all one as a team and yeah uh, yeah, the coaches have, uh, are really big on that this year, so I think Excellent. that's what's helped us so far. That's awesome. That's awesome. Great. Well, why don't we, uh, why don't we roll the next highlight package here, and uh, we'll be right back to chat a little bit more. A little bit of a rotation for that sixth spot on the blue line, but you're right. Now they'll have to make a decision. David Benkowski's going to just bolster. Here is Antonio Tercini. Score! Steals the puck and then finds the back of the net. Antonio Tercini breaks the ice. For Antonio, it's his third of the season. He has been quick to jump on loose. Through the neutral zone now. Over the line, Nesbitt. Long shot deflected off the right pad. A follow-up attempt. Stopped by George. Out in front and they score. The Spitfires respond. It's Owen Outwater with his third of the season, and it's 1-1. Shot off a leg. Abraham in the corner. Protus quickly across to Greentree. Greentree fires. Stop. Rebound. Scores! Nesbitt in front cleans it up, and a power play goal gives Windsor a 2-1 lead. Jack Nesbitt with his fifth of the season. Once again, the initial save is made by Carter George. Place you can break part of your face, and that is a long recovery and a painful recovery as well. Here comes Green Tree onto the back end. Shot, he scores! What a slick goal there from Liam Green Tree. And the Spits now have three unanswered. Liam Greentree extends his point scoring streak to nine games with his 21st point of the season. Over to Tercini. Tercini centers it for Nancy. And Eichler on the turn will clear it out. And off to the races goes Spellacy. AJ Spellacy shorthanded. Flips the puck around the defender. Leaves off and hitting the post was Morneau. Kept in by McDonald. Good work. Feeds it to Nancy. It goes by him, and McHugh will take it. Six on five. George now finally gets on the bench. Here's a shot that was blocked. Picked up by McHugh. McHugh backhander hit the post. As the beat goes on for the Windsor Spitfires. As they're going to win this one four to one. Improving on the season to eight, one and one. All right. Well, back after that game as well. And I mean, it seemed like a lot of the highlights there came in the second half of the game for, so I mean, obviously it was a, a very competitive first half of the game. Uh, what did you like about the effort that uh, the attack put in there? I think it was good. Like, mm -hmm. Room showed a lot of character that game. Like, everybody was playing hard, winning the battles. Yeah. And again, we can play with the top team. Yeah. You know, they're first in our, in our conference, so it just shows people that we can stick with those teams. Absolutely. I mean, you guys really, really put it on there. Like, the, the fact that you guys had scoring opportunities there to, to put it within one or, yeah. you know, almost get yeah. it within two is, is, you know, incredible to see there. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, I, I know a lot of your guys' games here, like, um, even some of the losses, I think only, is it only two or three losses have been by more than a single goal. Like it, it yeah. really seems like you guys have, are playing a different kind of game than mm -hmm. uh, than what the attack played last year. Like really shutting down opportunities, but but then finding these kind of dirty goals or these you know the grinding sort of style of the game. Is that something new to you guys? And and how has that been catching on now in the dressing room? 
Yeah, I think uh, obviously teams are coming in, especially the Bayshore, thinking it's going to be an easy game. You mm -hmm. know, we're younger, but uh, just same thing, working on our identity as a team. And, you know, obviously we're not the skilled, uh, most skilled team, but as our coaches say, we want to be a lunchbox kind of team. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, our name's kind of getting out there so far uh, as a hardworking young team. So yeah. I think uh, it'll definitely be our motive will change for sure. Certainly, I, I don't think people are excited to come to yeah, the Bay Shore no, anymore. That's I hope not. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, we also want to congratulate uh, the winner of today's trivia contest, and that's uh, Crystal Vallis. So congratulations to Crystal Vallis, of course, getting the answer correct here against what team did Braden Rogers score his first OHL goal against, and that would be the Sioux Greyhounds. So congratulations, Crystal. You've won yourself a pair of tickets to November 2nd's game against Saginaw. You can pick those up at the box office at the Bayshore. Make sure you uh, come to cheer on the Owen Sound attack real loudly. And uh, I think we have an interview here as well from head coach Scott Ray. So uh, why don't we go ahead, we'll roll that, and we'll be right back. Following the uh, Windsor Spitfires 4-1 win over the Owen Sound attack here tonight at the Bayshore, I'm joined by attack head coach Scott Ray. And, uh, coach uh, a game tonight against the uh, league's top team here early in the season and uh, ends up being a, a close battle right down to the finish but you guys come up a little bit short uh, take us through how that game played out from your vantage point well I think uh, in the first period we had a really good first and then uh, like we were talking off air I think their their top six uh, woke up in the second and, and made a, a even bigger push and you know we were on our heels there for a little bit and um, you know when you're playing teams like uh, like the Windsor Spitfires that have a lot of depth and firepower and high-end uh, draft picks on their team. They're, they're going to make you look foolish if you don't stick together and stick to your system. So, you know, I think we were, you know, got, a, got to playing a little more individually uh, if in, the, in the second, and that's why, you know, we, we broke a little bit. When you look over the course of the last two games, I mean, Barry has a ton of NHL drafted talent. Uh, this Windsor team's got a lot of high-end talent as yeah. well. Uh, have you finding your group is... Uh, you know, competing to the level that you want, or they get a little overwhelmed at times, some of the young players? Well, I think they're competing to the level that they, they should be at, right? I, I think uh, today was a case of losing a lot of depth with Waddock and DeLille out. Um, but, you know, like the the competes there. Yeah. You know, the competes there, you know, watching the guys track and then pick up pucks and going the other way on a, on a veteran team like that. You know, you, you got to be a scrappy bunch when you're playing a, you know, a high-end team. So, you know, like you said, we went into Barry, we scraped out a point there. Uh, really good hockey team that's supposed to be one of the top in the East this year. Uh, but we've done that all year. You know, London came in here, we scraped the point out of them, and then, uh, you know, Bramford and Niagara. So, you know, the panic button's not being hit here. It's just, uh, it's part of learning. And, and I think as a staff, we're learning what players can play in, in certain situations and, and that won't get overwhelmed. And I think that's, uh, that's valuable to uh, everybody. I mean, worth noting, guys, come in tonight's game with points in four of your last five so uh, come up short here tonight but you guys will go right back at them on Thursday night against the Windsor Spitfires what do you take from tonight's game in preparation for Thursday well I think we we understand them a little more and see what they're trying to do and you know their big boys are the big boys and like uh you know, Green Tree, he's a heck of a talent. And, uh, you know, the new, the first overall pick, you, you get to see him uh, up, up close and personal. So, um, you know, we just need to play a little uh, stingier. We need to tighten things up in, in our D zone and in a neutral zone. And if we could keep them from uh, playing with a lot of speed in the neutral zone, that'll, that'll benefit us. Last question for you as you guys head to next weekend's road trip. Uh, how good is it to maybe get away with this group? Uh, I know it's been a, a few weeks of kind of one and done trips yeah. or you went to North Bay the day before, but this is going to be uh, several days on the road. What will that do for this squad? I think it's 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 going to be big for us. Like it's it's always good to get on the road and, and and be with the guys. We're going to be on the road for five days, which I'm actually really excited for because you know I'm here all by myself in, a, in an apartment, so it'll be nice just to be with the staff and and, and learn a little more about them and uh, instead of just coming and working and then leaving. So it's going to be good for everybody. I think we'll do a little team bonding on our day off on sa Saturday, and we have something fun planned. And then you know we're hoping to come uh, come back with a split if we can get three points on this road trip I think that's what we're looking for all right well we'll wish you the best of luck on the road and thanks so much for doing this all right thank you Perfect. all right well we heard a little bit there you guys heading on the road for a few days and 
getting a you know five or so days there as a team. Uh, curious, kind of as you guys head out on the road, thought maybe we can do some uh, some other team callouts as well. So, uh, do you have uh, do you have a city, uh, or rather, what city or what team uh, has your favorite restaurant to eat at as a team? Hmm. That's a good one. Last year we ate at it was called Uno in mm. Saginaw. It was pretty good. It's just yeah. attached to the hotel, so great. Oh, that one stands out. Which one's the one with the? Uh, I think it was Saginaw too. The one with the bread and stuff. The fl- oh, that was Flint. Oh, Flint. Okay, okay, yeah, mine's my favorite's Flint. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. You guys are gonna get a couple of chances here on the road to yeah. grab a few good meals. Uh, is there? A- ah, we'll go to the fun one. Let's do this one. What team is the worst jerseys in the league? Uh, probably Peterborough or North Bay. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just ugly colors. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I'm gonna go with Kingston. Kingston. Okay. Yeah. Don't like the, the yellow and black. No. Eh? All right. All right. Is it? Do you feel similarly about the Bulldogs, or do they do it better? They do it better. I just find like the Kingston logo is too plain. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's fair. That is very fair. Uh, what uh, what team has the worst visitor rooms? Uh, Sudbury's pretty bad. Okay. Sudbury's awful. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. Flint has the best. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They have really nice stalls and stuff, but Good yeah, I'd know. say I'd say Sudbury. Sudbury's pretty bad. Okay. Yeah. What's uh, what's your least favorite rink to play on? I know a lot of people don't like Peterborough's square boards and stuff yeah. like that, but as cool as it is, I hate playing in London. Okay. Yeah. Just the atmosphere of it, or yeah, just does it get like? Do you find the ice real soft there because it's such a big space? And it's definitely softer, but it's not. It's not too bad. But okay, yeah, just for me. For me, I think I think Barry. Like, okay. I just hate the feel of the ice there. Every time I go for a warm up, so yeah, I find yeah. the ice is soft. Well, I feel like this time of the year too, it's tough. Like they yeah. always get foggy there pre games and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, all right, we I, we don't have too much time here, but what team has? Uh, has the player that you like to battle against the most? You don't have to say the player if you don't want to, but what, what team has the player you like battling against the most? Um, it's kind of two defensemen, but I like playing against Oshawa because okay. my old D partner from Clooney, my best buddy okay. from Danford. So nice. it's not always nice playing him. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, I like playing against Sudbury. Okay. Get the matchup against Villeneuve. We yeah. usually. Last year we played against each other like, right. as line match, so it was fun. What uh, you guys have like ten seconds for this one each? So, what fan base are you least intimidated by? Mm, that's a hard one. Do you know? Like Erie, Erie is pretty good, but they don't have fans when we're there because okay. we were there on like a Thursday. So. Yeah, yeah. Erie, yeah, okay. yeah. for sure. All right. Erie. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, yeah. thank you so much for joining us on the show. Best of luck as well with your five game or five-day road trip, yeah. three-game road trip. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching Attack Wrap here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Nick Kennedy, and make sure you stay tuned to Rogers TV for all of your own Sound Attack action. We'll see you next time. with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Hi, can I take your order? Hello? Oh, hey. Wait, what was the question? Let me guess. One driving high combo, extra baked? No, uh, could I get a burger with a side of fries? Think you're a better driver when you're high? Think again. Smoking weed affects reaction time and concentration. A message from Mad Canada. They've reached the seventh. 
back-to-back Stanley Cup victories. Greatness. And a new legacy begins. Absolutely amazing. It has happened in Vegas. It's not a destination. And lightning has struck twice. It is a continuous journey that never ends. These are the moments you dream of. Stanley!